Expect more bright sunshine on Wednesday. Good Tuesday night, East Tennessee. David Aldridge, Captain Accurate here from the Captain Accurate Weather Command Center. Well, you can see we have quiet weather here. All I see is one area that's kind of shaded in pink up toward Middlesbrough. There's a fire weather warning, given the fact it's been so dry there, too. They're concerned to make sure people don't burn. But meanwhile, we've got some rain moving on shore in Florida. They're preparing for another hurricane in spots. We're going to explore that in ultimate detail. Uh, but notice what we're seeing here, all the snow reports. All these snow reports, it's been snowing. I mean, winter's underway out in the west. Oh, yeah, it's been there for quite a while. Days, if not weeks. In fact, you can see uh, winter weather advisories. I uh, picked up five inches of snow here in parts of Wyoming, and it goes on and on. Five inches here, three inches there, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's a uh, game on in terms of winter. Now we just have to wait. When's it going to get here? Our high temperature today hits 79 degrees. That's one degree higher uh, than my revised forecast because initially yesterday it was 76, and then this morning changed it to 78, but we hit 79 officially at the airport. 81, the record high from 1986. So no records here, but we saw a record. We got a record. We achieved a record in Oak Ridge. They hit 80. The record was 79 from 2020, just two years ago. But our friends in Crossville also broke a record high. Their old record was 76. They hit 77 today, took out a record from 1975 and 2005. They had two years at 76. So we got a new record in Cumberland County tonight for this date, the 8th of November. High temperatures hit 81 in Chattanooga, 79 Johnson City, 81 in Jackson. You'll notice the future rainfall. Oh, this is the big talker. What's going to happen on Veterans Day? Well, by 8 o'clock Thursday night, not much, but give it a couple more hours and then voila, that takes us to about midnight. It's starting to get drippy. We know we need the rain, but maybe you don't want it all at once. Here's about a half inch, maybe an inch, inch and a quarter, maybe two inches cross filled by 8 o'clock on Veterans Day morning. But we take it to 11 a.m., the 11th hour of the 11th day, 11th of the month. Oh, it's really heavy in Cumberland County and Oneida too, Scott County. Ventress County could have two, two inches plus. But once we roll this through the rest of the Friday time frame into early Saturday morning, I don't expect we'll see much Saturday, maybe some spots of rain. Many of us have picked up probably one to two, maybe even three inches of rain. That's a lot of rain, but we could use it. Now, here's a different slide, as it were, a different model, same kind of idea here. It's not like it's going to be sunny in 70. No, it's going to be rainy and temperatures only in the low to mid 60s for our day on Friday. I've rolled it out to midday on midnight on Saturday. But that's generally gives you a sense. About an inch, maybe two inches, some of the heavier banding associated with Nicole and her remnants will be working its way here. And the last drought monitor, which comes out every Thursday morning, still has some of the driest areas in orange. That represents a level three. That's the severe drought uh, that could use the rain. We all could use some rain, no doubt. Tracking the clouds, we won't find much tonight. Let's get right to Nicole because I know that's a big story. This is a story that uh, actually is going to be moving toward Florida on the east side. Remember, Remember, Ian hit the west side. So if you have family down in Florida from Palm Bay to West Palm Beach, there's about a 10, 20 percent chance that they experience hurricane force winds. Wow. OK, so that's coming from the National Hurricane Center. So it's not a zero chance, it's a pretty good chance. But where you may find it will be between Jupiter and Palm Bay. That's probably where it's going to make it likely to make its greatest impact as far as landfall. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Now, it is only a tropical storm right now, knock on wood, but the sea surface temperatures are in the low 80s. So there is the expectation this will strengthen even further. Wave heights surfs up, my friend, 18. 20, 21, 22 feet surfs up for sure. Bahamas is going to continue to see these waves crash. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see that storm surge go further north of, say, Palm Bay. We're talking Jacksonville near Savannah could find three to six, six to nine feet. Well, that's a pretty expansive storm because remember, this was a subtropical storm, kind of like not as concentric with the winds. It wasn't as tightly wound up, but it, with all those winds, it could certainly create high surf and storm surge higher up the coastline into Georgia. So let me show you the future winds. I love this product because this comes from our friend at Barron's, who actually uh, engineers the Captain Accurate Weather app with, of course, Pete Michaels traffic. He's on there 24-7. Love that. But I want to show you this because this model, knock on wood, did so well. With Ian. Well, everybody thought that storm Ian was going to Tampa. No, 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 no. This one said, no, oh, closer to, say, like uh, Santa Bell, around that area, around, say, uh, uh, Fort Myers. That's where this took it. And I want to show you where it takes this one. It's going to hit twice 
more in the Bahamas. Here's number one, Exhibit A. It's about one in the morning, one in the afternoon, excuse me, 1.15. Wednesday afternoon hits the Bahamas. And then another hit across another island, across the Bahamas. But it looks like it's going squarely between West Palm Beach and maybe Port St. Lucie. Could we throw in, could we throw in Fort Pierce? How many of you know where Fort Pierce is? Because we're gonna zoom in. Oh, and it gets stronger. Notice the color. Just a little hint north of that eye wall. Starts to show color, maybe a cat too. You know, they're expecting it as a category one. But all of a sudden, it gets over those warm waters we just highlighted. Whoop, it suddenly ramps up. Don't be surprised. That's what I'm here for. I'm not, so your weather doesn't surprise you. All right, so we got a strong air storm right before. It makes landfall in Florida. Everybody in the media was like, oh, I didn't know that was coming. Well, we see it. And we have Baron to thank for giving us some great intel. But then all of a sudden, boom, hits right on the chin, like a Rocky Balboa punch to Apollo Creed, right between the eyes, between Port St. Lucie and Fort Pierce. Now, I'm not making light of this. This is going to be another storm that's going to have a damaging impact, take out power, take out trees, all the rest. Uh, but it will hit squarely in that area, most likely in the wee hours of your Thursday morning. So 1 o'clock in the morning, 1.30, 1.45. We want to watch this closely because the cleanup obviously is going to take days, if not weeks. And then it rolls over what's left of this storm over Florida, and then it re-emerges. It goes back over the Gulf of Mexico. How do you know? Look at that. That's about 1.15 Thursday. So about 12 hours later, it's now back over open water south of Tallahassee. Ooh, that's interesting. And it starts to slide into the panhandle, and there's Knoxville. We're just waiting for the juicy rain to come into town. And boy, I'm going to show you that uh, more in detail in a second, so stay with me. Tropical Storm Nicole, latest update, has winds of 65. This is the official cone from the National Hurricane Center, which you can get on the Captain Accurate Weather app. Notice, notice it's like, what, 75? Yeah, 75 mile an hour winds. That's what the hurricane says, but it wouldn't surprise me. The 75's hiding under the words Fort Lauderdale. There it is, 75. But it wouldn't surprise me if this is like an 80. Maybe it ramps up 85, and then it hits Port St. Lucie, Fort Pierce area, and moves upward. And then it rolls. Now we're the first time. Did you know, we're the first time in the cone this year. Oh, that's interesting. That We weren't in the cone like a couple of hours ago, but now we're in the cone. Oh, you mean like we're on the map? Yes, Gatlinburg, you're on the map. Congratulations. There is the cone of uncertainty, which means it could go this way or this way. About 80% chance it stays in the cone. And then there's that 20% chance it could deviate and they have to draw a whole new cone. But I think we're certainly in within reach of some really nasty winds over the Smokies. But the winds by this point are a little weaker. They're at the bottom of your screen there, around 40. So you're probably going to look at 50, 60 mile an hour on the hilltops of Clingman's Dome, if not more. Uh, then up toward Montreal, it heads toward Quebec. So if you want to connect the dots from the Bahamas to Florida to the Carolinas to East Tennessee and all the way up into French-speaking Quebec, that is an amazing storm. Nicole will have made her mark. And we want to make sure everybody's safe and ready for it because, again, preparation is half the battle. Watching the tropics, these are the spaghetti plots, and they take a similar path. They kind of coincide with your cone, but you can also access those spaghetti plots on the Captain Accurate Weather app. There's always that one spaghetti noodle that's a little uh, strays from the pack, and that one looks like it's headed toward Kingston. But we'll keep it near the Gatlinburg area and Charlotte for sure. That's the center of circulation, mind you. Not, to, not the rain, but that's the center of circulation. All right, so we've gone through Lisa, Martin, and Nicole Owen is next, followed by Paula and Richard if we get that far. The Captain Accurate Weather app with Pete Michaels, traffic engineer by Barron Weather, gives you every National Weather Service alert. No demand, <coughs> excuse me, no demand, plus three extras. That's what I meant to say. Three extras, including lightning alerts, so I hope you'll download it free at the App Store and Google Play. Now, bright sunshine on Wednesday will continue. More sunshine Thursday with clouds rolling in late. By the time it gets dark Thursday night, uh, that rain it won't take much to get up here. Uh, there's nothing to impede it. It will be advancing rather rapidly. And with locally heavy rain, expect downpours on Veterans Day. If you haven't noticed, I have a Captain Accurate premium service on Facebook. It's uh, only launched a, a couple of days ago, maybe a little more than a week. And the I want to let you know that my winter weather outlook is now available. Some people have asked me, are you going to do a winter outlook? I said, yes, it is. Uh, it's already out there. It's about a 12-minute video. You can check it out on the uh, Facebook.com slash become supporter slash Aldrich Weather. It's only 16 cents a day or $4.99 a month, like cost of a cup of coffee. I don't even know if you can get a good cup of coffee at $4.99. Can't a fancy one, but that will, that will get you into the premium service. You get also to participate in the Tennessee Spotlights. I did Bean Station yesterday and a couple weeks ago 
did see more, but we've got more on tap because there's a lot of towns in Tennessee. We'd love to have you join me on the premium service. It helps me stay rooted in Knoxville because my travel days to Lexington have come to an end. Still working on occasion, remotely, but not in the capacity that I have for the last year. Missouri and Tennessee, big game this weekend. It's Saturday, we know. And because of the remnants of Nicole, you'd think she'd leave pretty quietly, but some of the data suggests that she could still produce a shower on Saturday. So we're going to be upper 40s by kickoff, low 50s halftime. I'd say it's partly to mostly cloudy, depending on the track of Nicole, and 55 for an afternoon high. But we're 8-1. and one. The Tigers of Missouri are 4-5, and five, and I expect a 20% chance of rain for the game. Now, we know it rained down in Georgia this past game, uh, past week. Futurecast, I want to show you the big picture. A lot going on uh, toward the end of this slide, but not a whole lot in the short term. Lots of sunshine to today. We have, we'll have more tomorrow. We're going to get more sunshine on Thursday morning especially, and then slowly those high clouds will advance and it'll turn cloudy. But look at this. That's 515. Look, a little spoke of rain already moving through the Smokies at 5 o'clock Thursday afternoon, based on this model. And then Shazam, look at that, all that heavy rain. One o'clock in the morning, and where's the center of circulation? It's still at the bottom of your screen. So we get too hung up on the cone, and where's the cone going, rather than looking at the rain bands, because the rain bands will be well out ahead of this low. And then by the time we hit 715, then we get to, say, 11 o'clock hour for the Veterans Day parades. It's very soggy. Uh, there's about 12, 1215, 12, still very soggy. And ultimately, this front's going to push out. But there are some indications. Look at north of Shreveport and Pine Bluff. Some models want to bring some of that rain in here on Saturday. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now, one other look for traveling purposes. How much rain could we expect? I'm expecting one to three here. But there could be some fours and fives, maybe sixes around Columbia, South Carolina, from the remnants of Nicole. We'll be watching this very closely as well. Of course, storm surge, wave heights, all the rest. It's going to be uh, all hands on deck down south. Uh, tonight, 46 to the low, plenty of stars and cooler winds about northeast, 3 to 8 miles per hour. And then for tonight, down to 42, Morristown, 45, Wartburg, 41, Little Follett, 46 in Maryville, Alcoa, Athens about 45 degrees. Then for Wednesday, we're looking for a bright sunny day, comfortable too, but not as warm as today. Today 79, tomorrow 72, so we're about 7 degrees cooler tomorrow as compared to today. 70 in Morristown, White Pine, Jefferson City, and Talbot, 70 in Wartburg, 72 Kingston, about 73 for Teleco Plains, and Madisonville for your Wednesday afternoon. Here's your Captain Accurate Weather Authority forecast for Knoxville and East Tennessee. Bright sunshine, 72 tomorrow. We're going to 73 now for Thursday. Sunday clouds late, but I had to actually put the rainy icon in between Thursday and Veterans Day because it will start in the evening. And then we're down to uh, 55 for high Saturday. Winter chill, probably the coldest day will be Sunday. We're in the upper 20s. Don't get out of the upper 40s, back into the low 50s. And there are some indications that what you saw out west, like Wyoming, like uh, Colorado, maybe we mix in a few flakes, a few flakes, not a whole lot, but just enough to keep certainly the plateau and the northern plateau, that's like La Follette and maybe Jacksboro and, and Duff Mountain. Those areas may get some flakes out of that Tuesday event if all things hold together. But of course, a lot can change. Now, you can keep track of it all using the Captain Accurate Weather app. Now, with Pete Michaels Traffic, it's free at the App Store and Google Play. All you have to do is search Captain Accurate at the App Store and Google Play. Well, my name is David Aldridge. Some people call me Captain Accurate, but it's not easy being accurate. So weather doesn't surprise you. We'll see you here next time. Take care.